What's up, you guys? All right, so we're gonna try and put together a Vader G35. Now, any kind of experience that you have before going into something like this is gonna come into play. It's all gonna help you out. You know, mechanical um, composites with fiberglass, carbon fiber, whatever that kind of stuff, all that stuff is gonna help you out with this. Now, what I decided to do is, instead of making one long video at the end of this build, I want to keep up with the progress as we go through because I'm going to have so much material at the end of this that I feel like it would take me forever to finish that video. I mean, it could take me another year to finish the video. So why not do it while it's fresh on my mind and try and give you guys as much detail as possible that might be unavailable in other places. So before we get going with it, a little bit of my background with cars and you know fiberglass and all that stuff, I started out building stereos as a kid in high school before I was actually even driving. I had friends that would hit me up and they wanted, you know, fiberglass speaker boxes and custom stuff built for their, their stereo. I feel like I had stereo systems down. I was, you know, of course there were a lot of things I still had to learn, but compared to other people, I felt like I really had, especially the construction of custom uh, speaker enclosures, I felt like I had that kind of down and, and uh, just wanted to keep on learning. Now even before that, I grew up in a very mechanical kind of atmosphere. I had my dad, his friends, my uncles, you know, one of my uncles was a welder so I'd go watch him weld and knew that I wanted to learn that pretty early. So by the time I was 16, I was doing my own mechanical work, you know, I weld a little bit here and there, definitely got better at it over the years, um, and even dabbled in the fiberglass and stuff like that. Now, as the years went on, of course, after, you know, military and all that, I kept going. I had friends in the, even in the military, they were like, hey, I heard that you painted cars before and I heard that you could weld and all this. So the hobbies were always there and I kind of kept that alive because I knew whenever I got out of the military, I wanted to pursue doing something with building custom cars, you know, whether it was hot rods or whatever. I ended up in California. And what was really cool was I met some great people that helped me do that for the years that I was there until I ultimately decided to, uh, you know, move back to my home state and uh, kind of just, you know, reestablish that way I had family and stuff like that. But there was a lot of really good experiences that I had and, uh, you know, even got to meet with some of the guys from West Coast Customs at one point. That was pretty cool. I had cars that I would build from the ground up. I would take them all the way down to the frame rails, do a full, you know, sandblast and restoration all the way from the bottom up, and uh, it's kind of cool. There were, you know, quite a few that ended up in stereo magazines or getting trophies at shows and stuff like that. I was pretty proud of it. I never owned a shop of my own, but I worked with a guy that had kind of all the means to do this stuff. And after that, just to continue on a bit, I ended up working on aircraft. And um, not only having my mechanics license, you know, I went to school to actually be able to work on the airframe and power plants for aircraft. And that was pretty cool. Definitely had a lot of mechanical experience from that, but the fact that I had already done it before, you know, it all played together. And I felt like when I decided to build a Vader, I don't have experience with kit cars in particular, but there's a lot of things that I've done that I feel like I'm gonna I'm gonna have a lot of experiences that are gonna help me get through this build and be able to handle it so I figured we'd kinda jump into this and um, you know I wanna give you guys some really good details especially if you're gonna build one of these cars hit the subscribe button because I'm gonna do my best to be as detailed as possible and try to make this a little bit easier on you instead of you know, the things that I couldn't find just when I was uh, getting ready to do this thing. And in this video, we're going to focus on the front end and really just a dry 
rough fit. There is no big detail or anything as far as like the finishing on this part. All we're doing is trying to get that front clip to fit on and be close to where it's going to end up. Now if there was one conversion that gave me some good confidence to get these front pieces to fit, there was a BMW front clip that I once converted to fit on to the front of my GMC Sierra. It was a 94 truck and I got the parts from a 2004 X5 and it was basically the hood, the front bumper and the headlights and I wired it up for the HIDs to work and all that good stuff. It actually looked really cool and you'd be amazed just with that conversion how many people that I would have taking pictures down the freeway at gas stations. I mean the truck had all kinds of attention. So when I would go to fit these pieces on, especially that little core support piece and trying to trim things, it really brought me back to this BMW front end conversion because I remember I was dealing with welding extra pieces onto my truck fenders and modifying the metal hood and you know things like that trying to get the core support just right for those headlights to fit and I remember it being a royal pain it was probably back in 2006 that I did that and it totally brought those memories back but with this Vader kit the fiberglass is a lot easier to trim and then of course you gotta deal with the resin and you know if you're gonna go back and patch anything up that you cut out and you didn't mean to cut out which there are a few of those places not so much that I didn't mean to cut them out it's just that I I tried a certain thing and said well let me redo that and do it a different way so it was more kind of a you know just a little bit of an adjustment so that was pretty cool um, for the most part I feel like the front end conversion went a lot easier than my BMW GMC front end conversion so things like that will definitely help you out if you have that kind of prior experience too okay so enough about me let's get into the good stuff so, you got your kit ordered, then that big day came. You either picked it up or you got it delivered and you get to unpack all those parts. Now once you get all your stuff laid out and you know figure out where it's going to go, we're going to focus on the two front pieces. It's that core support piece that looks all big and awkward. And then of course the main front clip part, which is like a front bumper put together with fenders. And we're going to start with that. get the car pulled up into the shop area where I'm gonna work on it make sure the space that you choose is gonna be okay for you to make a really big mess because anytime you're cutting metal and fiberglass and trimming you know you're throwing that dust everywhere it's gonna be a lot easier if you can just sweep it away and get rid of it I mean you don't want to do it in a paint booth or something like that which my paint area is part of my garage I decided to do it under my covered patio and then I can move it inside whenever I need to now, of course, the teardown can be pretty easy. Most of it's straightforward. I mean, they're just such cool cars, like the way that the G35 was built. It was such a pretty car. Very like nice style to it. They were just always really cool looking. Now in recording this video I was still kind of debating on whether the car needs to be up on jacks when I get ready to cut the roof and stuff like that. If you're part of the groups on Facebook there's a little bit of talk about whether it's gonna be better or worse to have the car you know flat on the ground or on the wheels or up on jack stands. I could understand maybe a little bit of, of flex once you cut that roof off, but then again it may not be too much. I mean most of the weight is in the front with the engine. Definitely still trying to figure that part out, but to get going with the front end, I wanted to get the wheels off and get it up on jacks and be able to look around underneath it a little bit. And also I was redoing the brake pads just for the time being because I know they're in pretty bad shape. 
So even though I might redo the whole braking system in the future, for now I just kind of wanted to make sure the pads were in good shape and that everything was going to be good to go when I started trying to roll this thing around a little bit more and um, getting parts of the body put on it. When I got my front end parts off and I felt like I was pretty much ready to start getting that little core support piece to go on, I went ahead and took off the front crash bar or the bumper first because what I wanted to do was get that piece to fit and figure out what else was in the way and then I figured once I get it to fit on there pretty snug and right up to the original core support then it would be easier for me to take it off put the bumper back on and then just trim for that bumper. So that's what I ended up doing. And really it was, you know, the transmission cooling lines and then uh, just a few other little places here and there to get it to go on. Overall, not too bad to get a rough fit out of it. You are gonna need to remove some plastic from those headlight buckets. Pretty much everything that comes out and goes around. If you find a nice little spot right up kind of at the top where it comes from the core support, and I'll also try to get a video or a picture on here, good close-ups of where I cut those pieces out. That's gonna probably help you a bit. But once you got those little key things taken care of, I got a pretty rough fit on this thing fairly quick. I mean, you can pretty much do it in the same day. You pull all those front end parts off. If you work kind of quick, you can pretty much get a nice little dry fit of this front clip, you know, uh, fairly fast. So one of the things I've decided to do is um, I'm going to trim enough out of this core support piece, kind of working on it, going to do it for those trans cooler lines and stuff. I'm going to cut enough out to where it'll go around this crash bar. I think it'll work, um, but I am grinding the welds to get these pieces off. You can see it's already moving, but um, there's welds underneath as well. So grind the welds on top and bottom, maybe take those pieces off. And I'm gonna see if I can get that core support piece to fit over this fairly simply because I really wanna have this bumper instead of just leaving it off. But we'll see, hopefully it doesn't run me into any kind of bigger issues later. But for now, I'm gonna roll with it and hopefully it works out. Now, when you get to the point where you've got the new fiberglass core support piece to fit over the original core support, what you're going to want to do is make some markings kind of about the height where the bolt holes are for the bumper. And you're going to want to use a tape measure to take kind of a rough measurement of where to cut the core support piece out. And I'm talking about the fiberglass piece that came with your kit. You're going to notch it out for that bumper. But the best way is to try and get those measurements while it's on the core support using the bolt holes. And, and I mean, you're probably even going to have kind of some dirt markings where that bumper bolts on. And you should be able to see good enough to make the marks and get a good idea of where you need to notch that thing out. And what you're going to want to do is, you know, take the measurements up and down where you need to cut. But then also, when you put that crash bar back on, you need to measure how far that it protrudes off that front core support so that you're going to cut that far into your fiberglass piece as well. And when you get ready to slip it on, hopefully you'll be close. This took me two or three times to get it right, you know, taking it back off, trim a little bit more. But I feel like it's always good to start with it small and then trim more where you feel like it needs it little by little. That way you don't have to put back if you take out too much. Step on Wake up, brother, gon' rise with the sun. Step two, get some good, some food in you. Step three, you grow hard about what you wanna be. Step four, everybody just do your thing. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gon
Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. 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 Today's gonna be a good day. Set your affirmations, aspirations I got shit to do, the aftermath of preparation Good food, good mood, blood in circulation One step at a time, yeah, that's how you make it Set a goal you control and the steps you take them I try to pick one thought, have some concentration And if I make a mistake, it's called education I try to do this every day, call it replication Wake up, today's gonna be a good Okay, so we're going to put the front end down for a little bit. I think I've got it right about where I need it for now. I just, I, I've seen what I wanted to see, and I feel like it went on pretty smooth. So I want to get onto the interior and start pulling that out. Now that's a pretty straightforward process. Just try to be careful with everything. I feel like the more things that you save from breakage, the chance you'd have of using something later or selling it off and making a little bit of money back for your donor car so definitely I, I still try to take things out kinda nice I don't just rip it out crazy I know some say that you use the seat warmers and a few other things like that so I just kinda got with it the dash was definitely a process but um, there's also a guy on YouTube that has a really good video for pulling the dash out of the G35 just search it you'll you'll see him it was it was a very very detailed and I want to say he might have only left out one or two things and that helps you get that dash out pretty quick Now as far as the glass goes, I would say the windshield, the back glass, even those two side windows in the back, they're glued in there good. And the best thing that I found was to get a little, um, it's one of those oscillating tools. And I took an old blade and cut it down to where it's a little bit more narrow. And then I put a knife like blade around the sides and the front, kind of rounded the tip off a little bit. Now that helped out because I was able to go from the inside and actually cut a lot of that glue and that in conjunction with the actual windshield removal tool on the outside gave me a lot of advantage. I feel like uh, that, that helped out a lot going from both ways. It's still difficult because those rear glass uh, side windows are glued to that pillar where you can't really get anything there but if you use that oscillating tool you can get in there pretty far and uh, just keep on working with it it'll they'll come out eventually but those were a little bit tricky I did have to work with those the windshield still came out pretty much in one piece but it was already cracked so I wasn't really trying to be careful with it the rear glass I actually got out all in one piece and I feel like that's uh, it's salvageable if somebody wants to buy it I'll probably put it up for sale all you gotta do um, it's gonna be really loud but whenever I start it <clears throat> If it won't go sideways for you, move in and out like this, and you'll eventually, you'll hear it kind of hit the body. 
and since this roof is getting cut off anyway it might damage the the metal a little bit but i'm not too worried about it uh, of course you try not to you'll get the feel for how far it can go and then you'll know exactly when your rubber's cut uh, this is working wonders so far and i think it's going to help me get this glass out Now I did quite a bit of searching between the YouTube videos, people in the Vader groups that were posting pictures, and even on Instagram there were some Vader owners and builders. And you kind of have to put together a whole bunch of information, at least I did, I mean in this video I'll probably show quite a bit of it, but I had to put together a lot of different pieces of the puzzle to figure out exactly how to cut the roof off, cut around the wheels, the rear section, even that part um, in the front where you're going to cut right above the firewall that little two inches or so that needs to come down there's quite a bit of cutting involved but then also I was drilling out spot welds in some places where I felt like I could remove a piece fully it makes a, a much cleaner job and I didn't want to have a bunch of trash pieces of like scrap metal just left on these areas so that's the way I did it and um, I feel like it came out pretty clean. There's still areas I'm going to have to cut off to get the body to go on, but at least for test fitting the cage, that's the way I was able to pull all this off. For roll cage preparation, I gave it a quick sandblast and uh, painted it with a DuPont Imron Satin Black. And this is great stuff. It's called 3.5 plus polyurethane. It mixes with a hardener. So you got your main component black, the hardener. I add in the accelerator because industrial paints can take forever to dry, sometimes days. You know, it's not like using clear coat where, you know, you've got that three or four hours and you're ready to buff it at least some clear coats you know overall jobs are going to use a slower clear but these industrial paints can be pretty slow so with the accelerator I was able to get it to dry in about 24 hours it's great stuff and um, also I throw a little bit of reducer in it just to get it to flow out a little bit easier and that should protect that cage from any further rust or anything like that I went and got a new blaster to blast all the rust off the cage so I can paint it and um, I like the fact that they've upgraded some things. Well, maybe it's just because I bought the bigger version, but this is a Harbor Freight pressure blaster and they work wonderful. I had one before that was, um, it was smaller. And the main thing is that valve on the bottom, you just gotta make sure every time you set your uh, blast valve down that 
you shut that thing because if you don't there's going to be sand that accumulates in the black hose and as soon as you open it again to start blasting you're just going to waste a bunch of sand but if you shut that thing as soon as you put it down if you're going to put it down longer than you know 15 seconds close it up that way you can sit there otherwise um this is going to allow pressure to go to the back of the sand okay so basically it's pushing the sand through and it's also pressurizing the tank from up here on top which is cool now i like the fact that they add the water separator on this one on my old one i had to add the water separator and it's a big deal because if the sand gets moist it just gets clogged up in your in your hose so it's cool i can't wait to use it glad to have another one and it's going to make this job a lot easier also this hose is bigger than on the smaller version so there's some really cool upgrades i'm excited to see how this one works Now I would say for this part of the build, one of the important things you gotta do in the rear is shorten the bumper brackets. Now you can take the six or so bolts, I think it was six or seven, from each side, you can take them off to get the bumper off. And basically you gotta cut the plate off that attaches to the car originally. And once I cut that plate off, I cleaned it up, I got the trash, you'll see a, another video on this. It was kind of nice because I drilled out all the spot welds. I wanted to use that plate once I cut the bumper bracket shorter and folded my new bolt hole areas up or whatever you call it. Kind of made like a new flange out of it. You'll you'll see in the videos, but um, this was a little time consuming. I wanted to be tedious with it because the bumper is kind of a safety factor. I wanted to have that good factory strength. so. I tried to put it back to as close to original as possible, just making it shorter. All right, here's what I'm doing for the rear bumper. So I pulled it off from the car and I cut the plates off. Do that first and I'm gonna make the slits basically, I put them right about the middle of the hole because from what I could tell, if you fold upward at the hole, the cage bar should still fit in there. So I'm gonna bend these up and I'm going to do exactly how they did from the factory. I'm probably going to drill out the old spot welds. Yeah, there they are. So I'm going to drill them out and I'm going to use this plate, take these uh, trash metal pieces off and basically put this back exactly the way that was. So that way you get this plate strength back, you know, it's kind of a reinforcement. So that's what I'm going to do for the bumper for shortening the brackets on the rear. Just fold them up. Put it on, uh, make some holes, and make sure that it's going to line up exactly the way it needs to go. And then once it does, and you can also use this as a template, you know, drill uh, drill smaller holes first, and make sure that you're, you know, just take it one step at a time. Don't just drill them all thinking it's going to be perfect. But that's what I'm doing for the rear bumper. I think it'll work out.
Okay, here's a little extra detail on shortening the rear bumper brackets. Now, once you get them cut and bent out where you know they need to be, all I really did was put the roll cage up there on top. Oh, sorry, the top is over here. Put the roll cage up here on top, make sure that the pole was gonna fit in there. And that's how far they said to leave. It's just enough for that roll cage to fit. So what I did was I demoed the trash pieces off of the bracket. That's the right one. I haven't done it yet, but you can see I've got these pieces. You gotta look for the spot welds and um, same thing with drilling any holes. Use one of these nice little spring loaded punches and also order yourself. I'm pilot drilling with a one eighth because it seems to last pretty long. I mean, 330 seconds is okay, but they'll break a lot easier. Um, I pilot drill with a one eighth and then order one of these spot weld cutters from like Amazon. You can see the tip there, it's kind of flat. Man, these things are great um, and, it, and it's about the right size. So as long as you're in the center, you'll be able to cut those spot welds loose and um, you know, you're basically getting the, I don't even know which way this thing went, something like that. Yeah, so you'll be able to cut those spot welds loose, get the trash pieces off. And then now that I've got the bracket, there's a little bit of a dance to the drilling. When it comes to drilling the bolt holes, I'm gonna drill one top hole to the size for the bolt to go through. And then I'm gonna drill one on the other side. And what I wanna do is get both of those to fit. And then I wanna use a light. So you wanna pilot drill all your other bolt holes. And that's what I've got so far is the pilot drill because you want to be able to take a light and look in there and see if you need to adjust left or right or be able to look from the side. So as long as you pilot drill first, you'll be able to get a nice reference and you can draw like an arrow to move, you know, that way or whatever as you drill it up bigger. My goal is to try and get these holes as clean as possible where they're not super enlarged and uh, where where the bumper bolts on nice and easy, but all the, the, the holes are pretty tight. So that's the way I do it. I pilot drill all of them except one. I'll drill the full uh, size of the bolt and then I'll make my little markings and I'll go back and drill them all, probably one at a time, fitting it on just to make sure that I'm on the right track as I go. And then I'll take my other plate to reinforce since I wanna put this back on. I'm gonna lay it on there the way that it goes. And when you drill out those spot welds, go ahead and pilot drill all the way through because you want to be able to lay this on here. And now I want to drill holes through those pilots to show me exactly where my new spot welds need to go on this panel. And once those are all done, um, the spot weld hole, you probably drill out to, I don't know, maybe a five sixteenths, maybe a quarter is probably fine. It's really up to you. I can't remember what the standard size is for it. But yeah, you'll drill out your spot weld holes on here and then try to leave this plate with just those little 1 8 holes that way it's easier when you're welding from the other side you won't have a lot that goes through and uh, there you go okay so regardless of what i said earlier about the spot welds and welding from the other side it's probably going to be too difficult to get the gun up in there and it makes no sense instead of uh, drilling new holes to spot weld through on that side I'm just going to put this in place and I'm going to drill these old spot weld areas out to be my spot weld size. So I'll weld from the back here and then if I need to grind it down a little bit I will. So you'll probably drill that hole out to about a 5 16 and then uh, just hit some, some MIG welding up in there and that'll hold it to your new shortened bumper bracket. And uh, all I got to do is I know exactly how I want these holes to line up. It's almost there. There's a few little adjustments that I'm going to make when I put the plate on, but otherwise that'll do it. Here are my shortened rear bumper brackets. You can see I cut what I had to here, bent those out, and then once I got everything kind of drilled the way that it would work, I went ahead and welded these uh, plates back on. So, and you saw a little earlier, I was able to drill out the old spot welds and get the, the junk pieces off. Uh, these spot welds are okay. I'm gonna grind them down a little bit just so they're nice and flat. 
and uh, that'll give me that, you know, that nice uh, strength that you got from that plate from the factory. And uh, now the brackets are short, so there we go. All right, so here's a little walk around. I was able to shorten the bumper brackets and get all, I believe, six bolts back in. They're all in, and that's definitely difficult, but it can be done. Also, I used the plate from the, the old one. I just had to drill the old spot welds out and weld it to my new folded areas. But that bar fits in there. I mean, I don't think it could go anywhere else. It sits right outside the bolt, and the same thing on this side. So, I mean, it's, it feels like it's right where it needs to be. It can move a little bit, but. So there's the rear. Um, that looks pretty nice and close there. Those are a little high, but I guess that's normal. These bars set right where they're supposed to. And then same thing over there, it's uh, that one. And then these are both a little bit high, but that's okay, it's gotta be shimmed, I guess. And as far as the firewall area, I haven't cut all the way across yet. But I went ahead and did this part so it would at least set down. So that's where I'm at. Roll cage is kind of test fitted, I guess. We'll have to see, uh, kind of see where to go next as far as getting it to line up. But uh, I'll keep cutting the firewall and get a few other things ready. Probably those wheel wells for the first uh, body test fit. So for this section of the build, that's pretty much it for now. We got some good stuff accomplished, got the cage to fit on pretty good. Next is going to be trimming the rest of the firewall down that two inches on the top and probably going to have to remove some of the factory wheel wells in the back so I can get the new ones to fit on. But um, that'll come in the next video. So hopefully this one got you to a good point and uh, stay tuned for the next one.